I'm here with Sybil Grace. And uh, Sybil and I met uh, last year, last summer at NAM. Um, Sybil, actually, you were a Bog Street customer before we even we even met. And kind of a uh, you became a fan of Bog Street, and, and Bog Street became a fan of you. And uh, last NAM, we got uh, uh, the the benefit of you uh, sitting in our booth and, and jamming and uh, just kind of uh, impressing with your guitar like you do. Um, I'm going to do my best to give you an intro, but, uh, you know, I think uh, none of it's going to do you justice, so you can fill, fill in the blanks. So uh, you you now reside in Chicago. Uh, you were in Portland before that, and you're the founder of the Portland Guitar Academy. Um, yes. You are uh, an advocate for the, uh, and, and raising awareness for the uh, Autistic Self-Advocacy Network. Yeah, you got uh, it. As somebody on the, on the spectrum, you've uh, got a lot of experience and empathy and uh, what you've uh, been able to accomplish on the guitar is extraordinary and uh, I'm glad you got a guitar in your hands we get to hear some of that but uh, yeah Perhaps. just uh, welcome welcome to uh, to the conversation and uh, looking forward to getting to know you a little bit better thank you very much Paul for inviting me on here to chat a bit and um, yeah nice seeing you again as well it's been like you said uh, a little over a year now uh, since we first met. But yeah, I've been using Fog Street Picks for close to two years now. Nice. Um, uh, actually, strange enough, one of my guitar students at Portland Guitar Academy uh, worked for one of the marketing companies. Fog Street was, sorry, motorcycle. Uh, worked for one of the marketing companies Fog Street was uh, working with at the time. Um, and he showed me the picks and... Um, I'm an absolute, uh, like really, really uh, obsessive about guitar technique and ergonomics, especially. And, um, you know, I immediately could tell as a guitar teacher with like 15 years experience, I could immediately tell, um, why these picks were worth checking out. Um, and so, yeah, I went into it just kind of, um, you know, looking for a better solution. Uh, I understood the ergonomics of why regular guitar picks weren't ideal. And um, I was starting to actually have some pain. Um, so I really was looking for other solutions. I was using kind of the Dunlop Jazz 3 style picks um, before uh, primarily. And, you know, I like that pick design and everything, but, you know, um, you know, people didn't, don't realize how it's, there hasn't been much innovation in that space until recently. So, um, so I was excited to try something new. It was very apparent that you were obviously trying to improve the design continuously um, based on actual feedback from players. You know, I haven't seen any other company that's executing this way. You know, I've seen lots of gimmicky picks and things where I'm just like, okay, you know, but this really is, I mean, as I, I see myself as somewhat of an expert on guitar ergonomics and especially picking technique. And, um, you know, I can immediately tell why these are superior picks, which is why I, like, again, immediately just invested in this, you know, like was 100% on board with Bog Street. Um, and then, you know, getting to know you has been obviously <laughs> a pleasure as well, because you're uh, a friendly, friendly guy and I like supporting <laughs> your business. But beyond that, um, it's just, uh, you know, I. I see this as like necessary. Like if Fog Street picks weren't here, it would actually impact my guitar playing. Um, and that's really, really important to me uh, that you know that. Well, I, I really appreciate that. I mean, seriously, that means that means so much. Uh, uh, like I will not go back to other picks. <laughs> <laughs> I, re I really appreciate that. Um, uh, mm -hmm. I definitely want to find out. I want to, I want to know about you. Can you, Tell us a little bit more about you. I, I, I gave you a bit yeah. like the lamest intro, you know, it, it doesn't mm -hmm. define your, your, your scope of your artistic abilities mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and anything, uh, by any, any uh, stretch, but. Yeah. I could give you a little rundown yeah. of who I am and please. what I've spent the last 27 years doing. Ah, please, <laughs> um, please. Yeah. So I started playing guitar as a child. Um, I don't even remember when I started playing. I just kind of had a guitar in my house and was curious about it. And then, you know, when I was around seven or eight, um, something like that, my parents started kind of 
helping me get lessons and, and whatnot. Um, but uh, it was largely self-taught and um, I'm on the autism spectrum, <laughs> famously so, <laughs> um, uh, because I do a lot of uh, advocacy. Um, you know, being autistic definitely affected my approach to music and guitar. Um, I really, really loved, um, you know, music from a very early age and was extremely interested in it and listening to it as much as possible. And then, you know, in my teenage years, it was pretty much spent the entire time with headphones on, you know. <laughs> um, and then, you know, during times of frustration and stuff, uh, the guitar was there to really help me and help me through a lot of the things like difficulties with, you know, just being that age and, and having, you know, to deal with all the things that a young person has to deal with on top of all the things that being autistic, um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, the additional complexities, I'll say. Mm. Um, and, you know, so guitar was always just something that I really, really used as therapy. Um, but I also just loved music and, um, you know, uh, neither of my parents were professional musicians. So I didn't really know anything about, you know, being a career musician or anything like that. But um, I just kept training and training and training. And then um, by the time I was around 19, um, I started studying under some world renowned guitarists and um, training really hard. And uh, by the time I was around 20, 22, or so. Um, I was doing a lot more studio recording and production, um, helping with uh, mixing songs for uh, independent uh, dance record label in Seattle. Um, and then I started Portland Guitar Academy, um, which uh, I really just wanted that to be a, a, a place where people could, who had actual goals, could just train until they reach those goals. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a pretty straightforward mission. Um, but, you know, I'm trying my best to apply everything I know about guitar and guitar training in that. Um, and I've pursued that very seriously. But um, so around when I was 22 or so, uh, I moved to Portland and started Portland Guitar Academy. Um, at some point in there, I uh, went to PSU to study jazz guitar performance. Um, and then I went back to study classical guitar performance. Um, and again, just switch to studying privately with the teachers and uh, the professors. And um, they actually gave me letters of recommendation and helped me get into grad school. So, so you know, I didn't get uh, that undergraduate uh, music performance degree, but I spent a lot of time training um, in that space. And uh, during that time I was teaching and running my school and everything. So it was a really kind of where I cut my teeth as a guitarist. And in Portland, I spent a lot of time as well kind of working with uh, other me uh, metal artists and, and uh, to help them with writing uh, their albums and uh, helping them with writing solos and learning to play those solos and those types of things. So my school kind of specialized in sort of metal playing and then kind of general playing. Um, but uh, from there, um, you know, I've just been, you know, doing essentially like bedroom production and um, you know, helping bands with their albums and, and not really playing live that much. A couple mm -hmm. years ago, I think like five years ago, four, four years ago at this point, um, I joined a power metal band called Last Bastion. Um, and I played with them for, I think like a little over a year. Um, we did a few shows and um, then uh, I ended up leaving that project for personal reasons. But, um, you know, that was really great because I think I was around, I don't know, 28 or something, but that was really the first time I'd worked up to being able to really play live. Um, and that was something that as an autistic person, I didn't know if I'd be able to ever do. Mm -hmm. Um, but that was my first time getting like some stage experience and we only played a couple shows, so it wasn't, um, it wasn't a huge deal, but, um, for me it was, and I got a lot of experience through that. And that was actually inspired by a lot of, um, people I'd met kind of in the time leading up to that, people like Sarah Longfield and Yvette Young, um, who really helped me to kind of, I don't know, visualize myself on stage. So I saw a Sarah Longfield show at uh, the Twilight Cafe in Portland. And then like a year later, I was playing at the same venue. So anyway, for the last couple years, I have been, um, 
you know, still running my guitar school, uh, which I plan on doing forever because mm -hmm. uh, I think that I think that dedicated music teachers are 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 important. So I feel as though uh, I have some obligation to try to do a good job with that. Um, and um, but beyond that, um, I um, have just been. Uh, working on music production um, and doing a lot of studio recording. So I work on some video game music projects. Um, I was really involved with like this sort of independent uh, video game remix competition called Dwelling of Duels. Mm. Um, and I did that since I was in high school. And that's really where I learned to like produce and mix. And it's where I got like a lot of harsh feedback from uh, people because it's a it's an anonymous competition and some of the people in there are just some of the best musicians you'll ever meet. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, getting feedback from them really helped me. Um, and so, uh, I kind of kept that going and I've stayed one foot in, in the video game music world as well. Um, so I'm currently producing Stardew Valley music, uh, for a band called the Junimos. And our first album is, uh, we actually sent it uh, the first tracks to be getting mixed uh, by an actual uh, mixing engineer um, today. So cool. uh, that album should be coming out in the next couple months, hopefully, with any luck. So that'll be my first kind of major album, uh, which I'm excited about. And um, so that'll be another big milestone. So in the last couple years, I've been... Um, starting to try to say yes to more public events and things. This is part of that. <laughs> um, so that's been another kind of goal related to, I would mean, say, personal milestones and overcoming being socially <laughs> challenged. Mm -hmm. So for the last like two years, I've been working on this sort of Stardew Valley music project. And um, when I was in Nashville, um, you know, for NAMM and we met, I was starting to play some of those songs. Um, so that was like my first time ever playing any of those songs live, uh, was at the Bog Street booth. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. Um, I, didn't, I didn't even realize yeah. how special we were. <laughs> yeah. So that, and that, that actually counts as my first like live solo performance, even though at NAM you're not supposed to call it a performance. Right, so, right, right. It's a demo. It's a <laughs> demo. Yeah. Um, but anyway, moving on, uh, I felt. A performance and then uh on the way out of nashville i played at a, a little record store as well um so another another milestone but yeah so i've just been doing uh some small gigs um uh, as like a stardew artist um stardew valley cover artist for the last um like year and a half so i've played five concerts in the chicago area i think this year um and so i'm just really getting my first kind of stage performance experience and then um, I was just accepted to uh, grad school for songwriting and music production um, at uh, a program called Think Space. It's through the University of Chichester in West Sussex um, and so I'm starting to um, take songwriting and music production a lot more seriously and um, so right now I'm uh, writing and producing for five different bands. Um, and so um, three of them I'm heavily involved with as like the main artist. So uh, my Stardew Valley video game band called uh, the Junimos, um, my uh, underwater EDM band uh, called um, Oceaneer. So this is um, me releasing dance music under the name Oceaneer, basically. Okay, and underwater, under, I missed this. Like, what's that? <laughs> yeah, so it's, um, it's, uh, I call the genre submerged house. So it's dance music for fish, basically. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Um, that's which definitely a new category. Like, I, that's not on my Spotify playlist yet. So, okay. Yeah, so I've been, this is totally an aside, but I've been getting into, um, uh, oceaneering, so designing um, designing uh, underwater um, exploration uh, equipment. So um, I'm building my first uh, submarine rover right now, <laughs> um, and um, so this music is going to accompany the videos I make of me doing underwater explorations. So that's what Oceaneer is all about. Wow. Um, but these are straight up bangers. I mean, this is meant to be like, you know popular club music so if you're interested in actually enjoying music 
you know, that would be the one. Um, and then I'm uh, producing a, a, a metal band called Higher Order. Um, and again, that's kind of my original metal music. So I kind of have these buckets where my creative ideas go, which is important to kind of keep it compartmentalized. Um, and then I'm writing for a country artist named Eric Lawton. Um, he's an amazing talent. And um, I'm going to, I'm, you know, looking forward to winning a Grammy with that guy, like for real. It sounds like you're basically sitting around doing nothing. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> So yeah, that's 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 what I've been up to. That's Sorry, fantastic. Well, when you're not really building submarines and teaching and writing music, so and... the first releases of all these projects are coming out within the next year. Okay. Um. So the first Oceaneer single just came out today. Um, okay. So uh, it's a song called Crush Death, and it's on Spotify. It's okay. on, um, yeah. I'm gonna make sure we put links to all that in, in anywhere this uh, this this is going out. So um, so like just to take a step back, is there's so many different ways to make a living, so to speak, in music. But I think the underlying theme that I've seen with everybody that I've talked to so far is that there's a certain level of of passion and intensity and focus and um, a, a, a sense of adventure, if you will, where you're kind of yeah. plowing through things, you know, fears and, and things that, that, um, you know, you just want to take head on. And so to, to that degree, could you, could you talk a little bit more? So maybe like imagine the, you know, aspiring musicians or people that may, yeah. may be on the, on the spectrum or whatever that are, you know, early in their, in their journey. Yeah, to, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So there's a lot of levels to a music career. Um, aspects of it I describe as being similar to a gold rush <laughs> so I think there was a type of person uh during the gold rush who would have been just persuaded to participate in the gold rush you know um and I feel like it's a type of personality um on some level like if you're going to go out there and try to like be a big artist or go out there and try to you know really uh operate on a national level um, there's a little bit of that, uh, but in, I think that really for me, and I just, uh, I think this is true and it's how I would actually like explain this to students is, um, first off being a musician is a terrible way to make money. So you should only do it if you're passionate about it, right? You're it's, you know, if you want to make money, go into finance or something, <laughs> you know, um, so, um, so for me, I'm very passionate about music and guitar. I have been my whole life. And um, even when I work a job, I have a compulsion to be a musician. And so at some point, music becomes the only thing that's practical to do. Um, and if you're the type of person who ends up in that situation, then you should probably be a musician. Um, you know, that's kind of my main thought on that. Um, but Really, um, from a career standpoint, um, I, I don't think it's it's as much like a gold rush because if you are interested in, in doing things like teaching, um, if you're interested in um, even things like studio music production and stuff, if you're smart about it and you get educated and you get good mentors, you know, you've got a really good shot of, of being able to participate at the level that you want. Um, and then from there, bigger things are going to happen to the people that position themselves to let that happen for. So, you know, it's one of those things where you might think like, oh, well, only one in a million people make it in the NFL or whatever. <laughs> you know, those are not real numbers. But but like how many of the people that are actually trained by people who know how to help them get into the NFL get in, mm -hmm. you know, that type of thing. You're going to have a different you're going to have a different level of success if you actually get good training and you actually talk to people who know how to succeed. So for me, you know, I've had great mentors from the very beginning. Um, I've always sought out the best mentors I can. Right now I'm working, you know, like I said, in grad school and um, a lot of the professors and tutors are just people who um, are legitimate experts in their craft. I'm learning from people who have written, you know, 16 number one songs, you know, that type of thing. And so to get that level of expertise really makes you feel like, well, it's not just um, trying to get lucky or something like that. It just shifts your perspective entirely. Um, and so I just always see like, you know, regardless of what industry you're in, education is actually like, you know, what's going to set you apart from 
uh, other musicians and th that plus just consistency over a long period of time. Um, you know, for me, certain things that I've ended up doing and enjoying were not things that I started out thinking I'd even be able to do, or they were things I was really uncomfortable with. Like when I started teaching, um, I was definitely extremely shy and had a lot of trouble kind of talking to my students and maintaining a conversation for the length of time and everything I needed to be able to do. Um, and over year, uh, over the years, um, I've become much more articulate and I actually really enjoy talking to my students and helping them and everything. And so teaching has become something that initially I was, I definitely like as a teenager, never thought myself as like, oh, I want to become a guitar teacher or something like that. From a career perspective, from, from a long-term career perspective, I really, you know, I think teaching is wonderful, a wonderful blessing because I really plan on teaching for the rest of my life, like regardless of my financial circumstances. Like I just want to teach music because the world needs music teachers. Um, but um, that affords me the ability to just be creative and make music and just take shot after shot after shot of trying to make music that's going to land. Mm. Um, and so a lot of, you know, if you position yourself to be in that situation, you know, these days, um, you can create a grand vision, a grand musical vision on your own uh, with equipment that, you know, you can afford <laughs> if you invest in it over a long period of time. Um, and that's just a real blessing for people like me who, A, I, you know, I grew up in a really rural area and I didn't know anyone in the music industry. And none of my parents, my parents are not musicians. They were working class people and, um, you know, they struggled to even pay for my guitar lessons. Um, you know, so to go from that environment to now I'm getting invited to places where I'm talking to people who've won Grammys. I'm talking to people who I've looked up to my whole life or who wrote songs that, um, you know, have really impacted me. Um, and I'm realizing that, you know, that part of this is it's real. And if you, you work your way up to where that's your normal life, and then from there you operate as a job. So it doesn't look the way that I thought that it would look. Um, but it feels a lot more kind of secure and structured than I was afraid it might be. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. So I think yeah. that as a songwriter and producer right now, um, I'm positioned very well. I have so much creative freedom and I have the ability to take those shots and, and you know, make the music I want to make. And I wouldn't trade that for anything. So, you know, that's kind of where I'm at right now. With that's that. awesome. Yeah, that's so cool. It, I'd love to, um, I, you've got this guitar in your hand and, oh, yeah. uh, this is a 1968, 1968 ovation tornado. Wow. <laughs> um, so one thing I think I should do is talk a little bit about which picks I use and which yeah. ones I like and why does that make sense? Yeah, that'd be awesome. I'm recording guitar in, uh, almost every single day. And um, so I'm going to use a lot of different picks. I also play acoustic, electric, I play banjo, mandolin, ukulele, and basically every like fretted stringed instrument um, and uh, bass, you know, that type of thing. And so I will use a lot of different picks. So for bass, one of the ones that I've used a lot when I'm using a pick is this kind of blue stubby one. Mm -hmm. um, and I just really like it. I think it's like, three millimeter and like one and a half or something. Yeah, I think and so. I think That's this a... is the axe X cut. That, or... Yeah, axe cut heavy. Uh -huh. Yeah, the axe cut heavy. So this has been a nice one for recording bass. Uh, I play bass with my fingers a lot as well, but um, sometimes I am going to want to use a pick. So I think that this uh, has been nice for bass. Um, the scales. Uh, so this has just been the most relaxed straight up shred pick i've ever played so so can you dem demonstrate yeah yeah sure <laughs> so for doing things like arpeggios um or quick scales a very very comfortable design um i like it a lot just because like i said it has that sort of shock absorption quality to it and so 
you can just get a totally like limp hand, which is kind of what you want. Um, so for you, you mentioned, uh, you know, for for people who might not have as much experience, um, you know, the biggest issue people have is that they're gripping the pick too <laughs> like too tightly. Um, and especially people who just hold the pick between the first finger and the thumb because the first finger is not supported, so it's going to wobble all over the place. Mm -hmm. The only way to get it to not wobble is tensing up the hand. Mm -hmm. And so people get, you know, I see this with metal players and stuff all the time, you know, doing this, this type of thing with a big open hand. And uh, that just leads to all kinds of issues. It makes you move slower and you can have tension issues where, you know, you end up with, you know, tendon <clears throat> problems and whatnot. Um, so uh, this pick really does feel quite, um, Effortless to hold. I on the distortion if you need to. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm going through a Supro right now. So. <laughs> but, yeah, so, I mean, this is all kind of metal lead technique that I'm playing, right? So I think for any metal leads, um, any kind of technical picking, really, mm -hmm. I just enjoy this pick a lot so if you were like playing jazz or like you know doing kind of like in any of these like ld miola style like bigger runs or something like that so i just love this one um if i'm looking for something that's a little bit more kind of aggressive and tighter um the ultim battle axe i think this is a medium or mm -hmm. i don't think it's a full heavy um, but I really like this one as well. It's a lot more articulate and snappy. So if I'm looking for a very, very tight. And also this is a grippier material. So the ultimate talk when it, when it warms up, it gets a bit grippy, mm, um, which is really helpful. Yeah. Um, you know, especially with the original material, because I really like this battle axe light in the original material, but I found it got kind of slippy over time a little bit. I feel like the Neos, again, once it heats up, just because it's just a tad softer, it's mm -hmm. just a bit easier to grip. Um, and those are the three that I primarily use for like metal lead playing. And let me grab a, let me grab. All right, all right. Mission <laughs> of some tighter rhythm tones. Too. Okay, let's let's do. It. All on. right, they have the battle axe medium. Uh, and uh, yeah, an Ultim Tack material. Okay. Oh, so, yeah, I really like this one for tight metal rhythms. All right. Uh, when you combine the fact that your fingers kind of warm up the pick and it gets a bit grippy and then mm. you have the, the center hole and the grip on there it's like you forget you're holding the pick this happened to me with the with the um with the scales pick as well where you literally it doesn't you can forget that you're holding your guitar yeah that that was actually i, I really appreciate that feedback because that was actually one of the early sort of like inspirations for like if, if if i could get to a point where it's like you're not consciously thinking about the pick you know adjusting and slipping and you know all that is basically you just focus on playing and it becomes kind of like intuitive um that's kind of the ultimate uh, objective right um yeah all right um now let me get into like the acoustic picks <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so um i play a lot of acoustic um So this battle axe, uh, or sorry, the the axe cut light, um, I really love for hybrid picking, mm -hmm. um, and this is something that I just in the last like year or so I've been getting a lot more into hybrid picking. But it's so easy to be able to hold the pick while um, while playing with your the fingers, just because it's the 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 fact that it's thicker on two sides helps it stay secured in the fingers so even if you're using so i'm using like the floppy side for this the mm -hmm. 0.6 millimeter uh -huh. um 
and it's uh you know it's still very helpful that it's thicker on one side like i wouldn't want the whole thing probably being that 0.6 right. um and then when you rotate the pick you can get a warmer lead tone <laughs> warmer tone and then the sort of brighter snappy tone of that sort of thinner pick and then it's gonna like seamlessly integrate for chords so you can do you know I've been playing where, you know, I'm really kind of integrating strumming into the finger style and being able to rely on the sound of the pick for that while still getting articulate finger style. by rotating the pick. So if you wanted to take a solo, you can kind of get that. And then we're right back, you know, so you get that kind of percussive sound. comfortable for hybrid picking um, because again this is one of those picks where you just don't even really need to hold it uh, it's kind of hard to describe mm -hmm. I do a lot of pop and country recording so I love this pick for this I love getting that snappy sound into the same pick so it's just it's brilliant like i said if i didn't have these picks it would definitely affect how i play guitar so at this point you fully integrated into my guitar technique so being able to just go you know getting that different tone is everything Those little dynamics can set you apart as a studio guitarist. 
you know. And... Yeah, fully integrating the, um, even into my fingerstyle. Putting some sweeping into there. Being able to sweep in the middle of my fingerstyle uh, and hybrid picking. a nice nice pick very fun to play with that's awesome yeah. well man I, you you give me a lot of uh, uh b-roll for my uh, future uh a- advertisements i appreciate that <laughs> yeah you have, i guess i forgot to sign the contract <laughs> and, and uh, it wasn't my intention for this uh, podcast to be uh so focused on a uh, bog street and in, in the picks but i'm i'm like super honored that you took took the time to I talk about it or whatever just to but to make sure I'm, I'm wrapping up this is about you <laughs> to okay. you know because uh you're an inspiration yes for uh for any any guitarist anybody that's aspiring to uh to develop and i appreciate your advice um yes also for those that um uh, whether you're on the spectrum or you have any any challenges that you face in life that you need to kind of push through you know i appreciate your your, your sharing your your story there and then also, you know, as a, uh, there's just not enough uh, female guitarists in the world, in my opinion. And I appreciate you being, you know, leading on that front too. Do you have any kind of final, you know, uh, advice or perspective or things that you want to share? <laughs> sure. My advice is grow every day. Um, you know, this is all about, it's all about, you know, being the artist or creator or you know, musician or hobbyist, however you want to describe it, it's all about what you're actually wanting to do and, um, you know, explore and just not letting anyone else tell you, like, you know, maybe maybe the people that you've seen at the top don't look like you or maybe they're, you know, maybe maybe you're not sure where you're going to fit in, but if you just keep keep growing and keep learning and keep keep trying over a long period of time, you'll end up somewhere that's completely magical, at least in my, in, you know, my experience so far. But yeah, it's been, it's just been surreal how, especially in the last couple of years, um, my level of access in the industry and, you know, my perspective on it has been completely transformed. And there were a lot of times in my life where I didn't think that I would ever get to here. Um, and so it's, you know, in hindsight, I'm going to say uh, the fact that I was consistently passionate, consistently working towards this, and then just trying to make, you know, reasonably smart plays, like not self-destructing most of the time, you know, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's, but yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely, you know, you got to find, find the thing that you're into um, and just do that thing for the, for the love of it, really. Um, I love playing guitar. Um, I've been playing guitar for um, 27 years now, something like that. And um, it's like still the best thing ever. Um, (laughs) I still buy guitars. I still, um, and I want to play forever. So that's kind of, um, and I want to teach forever. And and now, you know, everything else in my life has just been a blessing uh, because, you know, the fact that I get to produce new music and work with artists and stuff is just, it's just a joy on top of everything else. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's my perspective. And 
you know, I plan on being a lifelong learner. I'm, I'm by far, um, you know, still learning to play the guitar, you know, mm -hmm. definitely still learning to play the guitar. Um, and so I'm hoping, you know, one day to get there. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're still learning, I don't even know where, where that leaves me, but, uh, <laughs> uh well, oh, so, well thank that's, you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Uh, and it was so great talking to you. So great catching up. And uh, yeah, to catch up with uh, Sybil at SybilGrace.com. Uh, find her on Facebook, uh, YouTube. We'll put links everywhere. And uh, if you're in the Portland area, check out the Portland Guitar Academy. Oh, no, that's an online. We're an online. Oh, it's online. School. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, so we're, so we're, we are entirely online. If oh, you wow. want guitar lessons okay. and you want to take lessons with me, oh. <laughs> hit me up. Even better, even better. We yeah, can't go wrong. So, right? Thanks so yeah, much, Sybil. Yeah. All right. Thank All right. you. Um, thank you very much, Paul. And thank you for the guitar picks like uh, that you make. Thank you for making great guitar picks. That's 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 the blurb. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You're awesome. Thank you for having an actual impact on how I play guitar. And thank you for being part of my guitar journey. <laughs>